It's Friday, October the 24th, 2014. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield, and this is episode number 55 of TEN, Transport Evolved News for the week beginning October the 20th, 2014. Being driven around a racetrack in a fully prepared race car is one thing if the person behind the wheel happens to be a fully certified race car driver. But how would you feel about being driven around a race course at speeds in excess of 150 miles per hour if there wasn't anyone at all behind the wheel? That's the question we we're asking ourselves after seeing Audi send its RS7 autonomous driving concept car around the world famous Hockenheim Ring in Germany this week without a single human on board. Prepared specifically for the stunt, the car used its onboard memory of the track alongside sophisticated cameras and ultra-sensitive GPS to accurately figure out its position on the track at all times, putting in a total lap time of just over two minutes for the entire Formula One course. As well as making for some pretty impressive video, it just shows what autonomous driving technology is really capable of. That said, I'm not sure I'm ready to tackle the morning commute that quickly just yet. The 2015 Volkswagen e-Golf, the first all-electric plug-in from Volkswagen to go on sale in the US, has received its official fuel economy and range ratings from the EPA this week. With a range of 83 miles per charge from a 24.2 kWh lithium-ion battery pack, the e-Golf is ideally suited to do battle directly with the popular Nissan Leaf electric hatchback in the plug-in marketplace. And with a fuel economy of 116 miles per gallon equivalent, the two cars really are equally matched. Which brings us on to price. Starting at $36,265 before incentives, the e-Golf doesn't just match the Nissan Leaf in performance and range, it matches it in price too. Let the fight begin. It's no secret that Ford's all-electric Focus hatchback is something of a compliance car, produced by Ford and sold in limited enough numbers to satisfy zero emission mandates in states like California. Often dismissed by its Detroit parent in favour of its more mainstream plug-in hybrid models, the Focus Electric is probably the most unloved Ford plug-in on sale today. But this week, a rumour via Left Lane News suggests Ford is about to drop a massive $6,000 off the price of the 2015 Ford Focus Electric, making it sit well within Nissan Leaf territory. Rumoured to go on sale for $29,995 before incentives, the 2015 Ford Focus Electric is finally truly competitive in a market that's just gained a new similarly priced player, the aforementioned 2015 VW e-Golf. In short, if you're in the market for a new plug-in hatch, you've finally got a great range to choose from, at least if you live in a plug-in friendly market. It could be said that Michigan, home to Motor City, which is itself home to America's biggest and most well-known automakers, has a lot to benefit from trying to help the auto industry keep the same status quo that it's enjoyed for the past few decades. So when given the chance to ban Californian electric automaker Tesla Motors from going against the status quo and trying to sell its luxury electric cars direct to customers, the Michigan legislature, no doubt helped by some enthusiastic lobbying from pro-auto dealer entities, has successfully succeeded in changing Michigan auto dealer law to make sure Tesla can't sell its cars direct to customers there. By removing one single word, the possessive pronoun it's, from the books, SB6505 closed a loophole that Tesla used earlier this year in Massachusetts to overturn that state's ban on direct Tesla sales. Despite last minute pleas from Tesla fans and its suppliers in Michigan, State Governor Rick Snyder signed the bill into law yesterday, saying he would be open to future discussion of the issue. For now, however, the home state of the US auto industry has closed its doors to the most innovative US automaker. It might have taken Brits a while to get the message about plug-in cars, but figures released this week suggest that after several years of lacklustre sales, plug-in cars are finally taking off in the island nation. So much so that 5,000 plug-in car grants awarded in the third quarter of this year account for one-third of all plug-in car grants issued by the British government since its electric car incentive programme started back in 2010. Helped by the launch of the Tesla Model S and BMW i3 in the UK this year, plus the appearance of the e-Golf e-up and Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV, the British plug-in car market is far more mature than it was this time last year. And with more plug-in charging stations than ever before on the UK's motorways, thanks to companies like Ecotricity, plug-in car ownership is finally starting to make sense. Well done, UK. What took you so long? In the world of consumer electronics, finding out that your computer, smartphone or gadget is incompatible with the latest software update and headlining all new functionality is frustrating, especially if you've recently purchased the said device. 
In the automotive world, however, it's pretty much taken that once you've purchased a car, it will stay that way until the day you say it. No upgrades and no extra features. But now a core of Tesla Model S owners are petitioning Tesla Motors to offer autonomous drive features it announced two weeks ago as a retrofit option for those who are willing to pay for them. Their primary argument? That Tesla just isn't any other automaker. Tesla had initially said upgrades wouldn't be possible due to the complexity of the changes involved, but those who've signed up the petition, nearly 1,000 Tesla owners, seem convinced Tesla will be able to figure out a way. I, however, remain to be convinced. Following on from its first hydrogen fuel cell vehicle deliveries in the US back in May this year, South Korean automaker Hyundai has brought hydrogen fuel cell technology to the UK, with the official arrival of the first six Hyundai iX35 FCV SUVs to come into the UK. Essentially a European rebadged version of the Hyundai Tucson FCV we've seen on the roads of California, the Hyundai iX35 is powered by a 100 kilowatt proton exchange membrane hydrogen fuel cell and a 100 kilowatt kilowatt electric motor, which delivers a 0 to 62 time of around 12 and a half seconds and an estimated range of around 265 miles from 12.4 pounds of pressurized hydrogen. But while the UK is committed to spending more than 11 million pounds in funding to help support the growth of hydrogen economies, there are currently only a handful of refueling stations in the UK at the moment, and most are in the London area. And unlike electric cars, you can't just refuel at home if you can't find a place outside of home to fill up. So as long as you only need to drive around London, you, you should be fine. Um, yeah. Here's a question for you. How does German automaker Daimler make a cool $780 million from the electric car revolution without selling hundreds of thousands of electric cars in the process? Answer? Rescue Californian automaker Tesla Motors from a near certain death in 2009 by acquiring nearly 10% of the company and wait for it to become successful and then cash into the tune of $780 million. That's exactly what German automaker Daimler has done this week after selling off the final 4% of nearly 10% original investment made in Tesla back in 2009. Initially purchased for around $50 million, the automaker decided to take advantage of Tesla's overweight stock and get out while the going was good, making more than the GDP of St. Kitts and Nevis in a few seconds. Despite cashing in on the Tesla stock, however, Daimler said its relationship with Tesla is still strong and it will continue to use the plug-in expert for drivetrains for its Mercedes-Benz B-Class electric drive for many years to come. As the nights draw in across the Northern Hemisphere, the chances are your attention is starting to shift from those warm summer evenings to warm log fires, snowfield lanes and perhaps even a ski trip to your local resort. But if you're a plug-in loving skier who has yet to book your holiday this winter, may I present the latest fun off-piste activity for you ice racing in electric cars. Yes, folks, thanks to Renault's diminutive Twizy and some studded ice tires, you'll be able to race Twizy electric quadricycles on the snow and ice at the La Cluaz ski resort in the French Alps this winter. With tiny wheelbase, powerful electric motor and rear wheel drive goodness, the Twizy is the perfect car for ice racing. And because it doesn't have windows, you'll feel like you're outside and having fun, even if you're sat at the wheel of a crazy fun electric car. I really want to go. That's it for this week. Don't forget to join us next week for another episode of TEM. And in the meantime, visit www.transportevolve.com for all the Evolve Transport news that's fit to print. Subscribe to our channel and other shows on YouTube. And don't forget to join us live in the new Sunday slot at 6pm GMT for the relaunched Transport Evolved panel talk show, where we'll be discussing these stories and more. You should note, however, that this week the show will be at GMT, not BST, since the UK will have just moved to winter time and that means for one week US and Canadian viewers might find the show at a different time as usual. But you can check www.transportevolve.com for the post which explains it all. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield, have a great weekend and until next time, stay juiced up! <laughs>